Hi, welcome to my automotive show KG Canadian Enthusiast to, to, to my latest episode. Before start the show, to hit the like button and subscribe to my show. Now let's get started. Now if you think about uh, on more news today, we're going to talk about vehicles that's going to go away and all new vehicles and vehicles with reduced price tags, which we're going to talk about. So let's start with uh, some, way. let's talk about some rumors first. Tesla is now, according for many rumors, Tesla has already began testing of Tesla's first ever compact EV. That's something equivalent to a VW ID3 at the moment. Now, unfortunately, like Tesla beat us to EV, VW have beaten them to an EV compact car. So I don't know how much better can Elon Musk make a Tesla Model uh, Model 3 or Model 2 better than ID3 because if the build quality is anything to know about Tesla, it's worse than a biscuit packet, and the build quality is worse than a dog. That's that's the reality. So you should consider that. So and also well, well, something to consider. So from that, let's get to Jeep and some news. Uh, according for new rumors, Dodge will have a plug-in hybrid next year in 2022. Jeep will have a EV in 2023 and DS is with DS will go most likely full EV for the for the British market in 2024 so full EV so in general uh, from the Tesla news so these are all EV news so it, uh, just to recap I said Tesla have already began to uh, began the testing of their EV compact EV moved on from there I talked about the upcoming PHV EV and PHV and EV versions of Jeep DS and Dodge. Now, if you don't know, DS is the luxury division of PSA, of of, of Strelis. Also, the luxury division of Peugeot and Citroen, if you don't know. Now, moving on from that, another, part of, another interesting rumor that I really, really love is the first Rally Art model. The expectation is that it's going to be based on the upcoming Mitsubishi Outlander PHV. Now, I don't know could this could mean more horsepower or just a exterior kit update. But if I'm serious about this, if I'm pretty clear, Mitsubishi did say they want to give substantial boost in performance if, if there is going to be a rally art version. Since they're only going to do luxury SUVs to begin with. So, I guess it's safe to assume that at this point. So, let's hope there's more performance than a cosmetic jewelry update. That's my point. And of course, moving on from that, it's time for more rumors. Actually, time for more rumors. Uh, Lexus have now Lexus have uh, confirmed. Now these are some things. Lexus RX and the next generation RX and LX will be coming in 2022, and the Lexus GX will be coming in 2024, and the Lexus NX will get a facelift in 2023. So it shows that by 2025, Lexus would be fully packed with new vehicles and facelifted vehicles to keep up with the competition. Looking forward for it actually. And of course, moving on from that, Subaru have just uh, teased a picture of the upcoming wilderness model. Now, a car and driver claims it's a sand. I, I, I respectfully disagree with car and driver actually. I think it's a Forestier. Because the face of the Forest is about to debut in North American trim very, very soon. For me, it's a Forestier. So that's my belief. So it's not Assange, my friend. It's just not. So moving on from that, Cadillac has now just uh, confirmed that they'll be taking orders for the Cadillac Lyrique. Uh, sorry if I butch the name there. It's the Cadillac's first ever EV. Uh, production will be beginning from next year. It, it's a Model X, Model X competitor. I believe it's more luxurious than a Model X, so I'm not going to complain one second about it. Five door SUV, five seats, one fixed speed transmission, and a single electric motor with 340 horsepower. It might not seem a lot, but I care about the range, and the range seems good. That's my fact. Prices wise, expect around sixty to eighty thousand dollars, most likely, when this thing comes out next year. Then moving on from that, Lexus, well, in typical fashion, have also revealed a black line version for the two row rx not just for the three row rxl just to uh, remind you on that now talking about slashing prices now yes one, one more set of information if you don't know volvo have just replaced the base non-hybridized engines with with mild hybrid engines in north america especially with b5 mild hybrid engines and b6 mild hybrid engines they are two liter turbo engines 
with 247 to 295 horsepower. So they are all come with a 48 volt mile hybrid system. Prices wise, the XC60 starts from $43,000, goes all the way to $71,000 for the Polestar version. So it's not a bad value for money at all. It's pretty good value for money. If you're buying a Volvo, pretty good choice if you buy one. Solid choice indeed, my friend. Now for the last three vehicles of the day I'm going to talk about. Uh, Pininfarina Barry ba ba Basta, Basta. It's a full EV luxury hypercar. Shares components with the Remac, and of course, you know the Remac, uh, Remac, and the upcoming Porsche hypercars, EV ones. So specs: two door coupe, two seats, all wheel drive, one fixed trans, one speed fixed transmission. Or it could be two speed. I could be wrong about the gearbox here, and a standard trim level. It's powered by Cod electric motors with with 1,874 horsepower and 218 miles per hour, and a, and, and a price tag of 2.2 million dollars. Now this will be revealed on the 12th of August, but I don't really care. I think we know the numbers at this point. The interior I haven't seen it, but again I don't expect a very practical interior, but I expect it look good. It's Pininfarina. It should be good looking. So yeah, now moving on from that, let's talk about the Nissan Leaf very quickly. The prices of the Nissan Leaf is slashed this uh, model year. For the entry level, the Nissan Leaf is reduced by $4,270. So the second model, it's been reduced uh, by, the second model is reduced by uh, 6000 was well, 6160 for the third uh, for the third trim level in the Nissan Leaf lineup price was reduced by 5870 and for the range topping SV uh, SL plus for the Nissan Leaf 6570 in terms of price reduction so it's cheaper the Nissan Leaf now it's the cheapest EV you can buy in the US if you include the tax benefits of buying an EV so it's pretty good news I'm not an EV fan, but I like a good affordable EV if they can serve the equal purpose with value for money. I love the Nissan Leaf. I think it has a better build quality than Tesla. And many people will agree with me on that. I can assure that. So from the Nissan Leaf, of course, remember you can have the more powerful 204 horsepower electric motor as well as it has a single electric motor. Just go for 204 horsepower motor, people. Why would you go for the lesser one? I don't know why. Now moving on for the last one. This is sad news. Few weeks ago, actually, we talked about the Honda Legends exit, and now this is the end of another legend, the Toyota Avalon. The next year, uh, August of 2022, Toyota have confirmed the Toyota Avalon will end production in the U.S. I don't know what's happening in China because the Chinese buyers love luxury saloons, so that might most likely go on in China. Now, the reason it's that it's too close to a Lexus ES, according to them, and I agree. In terms of quality, creature comfort, luxury standards, the ES and the Toyota Avalon beats the same set of rivals. And that's not good for Lexus because Lexus is the vehicle that needs to be preserved. And the Avalon's advantage over the Camry it's based on was long went away once its wheelbase was reduced with the current fifth generation model came out. So something to consider there. So this would mean it's Toyota going to end production of the Avalon after 28 years. End of a legend. The birth of the Avalon. The, uh, the Avalon, Avalon first came into the automotive business in 1994 uh, as a replacement for the Toyota Cressida. Now, of course, it's miles better than a Cressida, of course, to begin with. For most of its generation, this was separate from the Camry. This was more closer for the ES than the Camry. But the, the, but the current generation Toyota decided to take this a sportier route. A sportier route and Camry shared architecture. Which is fine. And I think in a general term, for me, this is the best Avalon ever made in my book. Some people will disagree with me on that. But I'm totally fine with that, of course. Now, prices-wise, the Avalon will start from $37,000, go all the way to $44,000. The trim level to choose for me is the limited trim, which costs $43,000. Which cost for which cost around forty three thousand dollars. Go for that trim level, the limited trim. So you might say, what do I think about the future of the Avalon? I believe the Avalon's exit is bad and sad news, but it was inevitable. The Lexus ES was much worth to save its preserved life. It's like saving someone else's life. The Avalon gave up its life 
to save the ES. And that's totally fine. A market where luxury SUVs are dominating sales, it's totally acceptable that the Avalon had to go. Because the ES should serve your most of your needs and the ES will be a bit cheaper as well with the Avalon now gone. Something to consider. And something also to tell you is that, don't worry. If you want a full-size car, something like a Nissan Maxima or a Dodge Charger or a Chrysler 300 will survive the storm because they all serve a purpose for the companies, which I will explain to you in a different episode. So thank you very much for joining me on the show. So thank you very much.